Welcome to Central Park, a natural beauty in New York City. Join us on a journey through the remarkable features and significance of Central Park, one of New York's most famous landmarks. In the mid 19th century, as New York City rapidly expanded with bustling streets and towering buildings, Central Park was created. Spanning 843 acres, the park was established in the 19th century as a response to the challenges posed by rapid urbanization. Frederick Law Olmsted, a landscape architect, and Calvert Vox, an architect, united their talents to transform a rugged landscape into the magnificent masterpiece that Central Park is today. Throughout the park's history, various recreational areas, including baseball fields, playgrounds, were added, fostering spaces where people could come together and enjoy the park's beauty. Central Park is not only a natural park, but also boasts a diverse collection of sculptures and landmarks. Let's delve into some intriguing facts about the sculptures and landmarks that grace the landscape of Central Park. One of the most interesting sculptures in Central Park is the Alice in Wonderland statue. It includes the figure of Alice and her kitten, Dinah, sitting atop a giant mushroom surrounded by her Wonderland friends, the Cheshire Cat, Mad Hatter, Dormouse, and the White Rabbit. Created in 1959 by sculptor Jose de Crieft, Jose de Crieft modeled the face of Alice after his daughter, Donna Maria, and the Mad Hatter after George de la Corte. As we move deeper into the park, we encounter the majestic Bethesda Terrace, a large plaza consisting of two levels. But what makes this terrace truly remarkable? It possesses a ceiling adorned with nearly 16,000 tiles, a masterpiece in its own right. In 2002, a monumental restoration project began to ensure the preservation of this architectural gem. The work was completed in 2007. Next, at the heart of Bethesda Terrace, stands the iconic Bethesda Fountain, created by sculptor Emma Stebbins in 1873. The lily in the angel's hand symbolizes the purity of the water. Over the years, this spot has become a favorite gathering place for visitors, offering a sense of serenity amidst the bustling park. Tucked away, in a peaceful corner of Central Park lies Strawberry Fields. The centerpiece of this memorial is the Imagine Mosaic, created by artist Yoko Ono. Surrounded by the benches, the area provides a focal point and gathering space. Adding an exotic touch to Central Park is the obelisk, also known as Cleopatra's Needle, which arrived in Central Park more than 130 years ago. It was a generous gift to the United States by the Egyptian government in 1879. Standing at 69 feet tall, 8 feet wide at its base, and weighing around 200 tons, it's a testament of the enduring history that Central Park embraces. Continuing through Central Park, we come upon the mall, known as Literary Walk. Here, people can stroll, sit, listen to music, contemplate monuments and admire trees. In the southern stretch of the mall, numerous statues were added in the 19th century. In 2020, this section welcomed the first new monument in over half a century, the Women's Rights Pioneers Monument. The northern segment of the mall unfolds into the concert ground, conceived in the 19th century for classical and popular music. It was later replaced by the Nomberg Bandshell in 1923 for a larger and more modern facility. These sculptures and landmarks, among many others, elevate Central Park to a place of significance. They inspire and contribute to the park's enduring charm. 
but there's more to explore in Central Park than meets the eye. As you journey through Central Park, you'll discover a unique blend of history and nature. For more information, visit the Central Park website at www.centralparknyc.org. But before we part ways, let's hear from some who have visited Central Park. When was the last time you visited Central Park? That was back in June, and that was like during the first week of June. That's actually was my last visit. What brought <clears> you there? So it was just me and my friends. We just went there. We just visited the whole entire um, Central Park, and also like Central Park, like it's just like every aspect of it. It's like the the boat bridge, and also the castle. Are there any specific areas in the park that you find appealing or amusing to you? I kind of, maybe because it's like the closest entrance to, uh, to us, but I like Central Park South, like as you're walking in from the Columbus Circle area, just because it's always like really lively, fun, there's always something to do. And I especially really like, you know, walking in and seeing like those big like boulder rocks things and just like hanging out there with a couple of friends. That's always really nice. All right. So do you think, you as a person, like, what activities do you mostly enjoy? When you, when you go to Central Park, what do you most likely do? Well, you know, Central Park is such a big place. It's so, you know, diverse in what you can do. But I kind of just like walking around in the park, you know, kind of getting lost at times. You know, I think just like as in New York as a whole, it has a lot of walkability. And so it's just kind of cool to walk around, see what you can find, you know, even if you don't know where you're going. And, you know, you could always follow the signs or, you know, 21st century, you have your phone, you could always Google map the exit out of there. So, you know. I mean, there, in Central Park, there's a lot of ground to cover. Exactly. So, you know, Huge it's park. Very, it's very walkable, yes. I, I agree with that point. Out of all the seasons we've had in New York, uh, mm -hmm. winter, fall, spring, summer, what season do you enjoy most when you're at Central Park? Most likely, I I like the I like the summer season because like that's my favorite season, and also is this is just like you know it's nice out regardless if it's like hot or like less heat weather. It's just like it's actually the most season that a lot of people goes there during the summer season, and also there's like tons of activities. If you were to introduce someone to Central Park, you know, the first time. How would you guide them? What what steps would you take? What would you say? You should see this. You should see this. What would you say? First thing I would probably do is take them to the best that I found, you know, just so they can see that like really, really beautiful fountain and the actual like arc that's like, you know, leading there and that pathway in the water also. But, I mean, after that, it's just about like finding your own way. You know, there's plenty of paths. There's plenty of uh, roads you could take.